Hey, what's up everybody? This is Jordan from sleeklens.com and in this video I'm going to go over droplets in Photoshop. So droplets in Photoshop are basically little applications, little tiny applications that you make in Photoshop that will allow you to easily batch process a whole bunch of photos uh, using your Photoshop actions. So in this video I'm going to show you how to create a droplet and how to run a droplet or run your photos through a droplet so that you can easily batch process uh, as many photos as you would like. So let's go ahead and get started and I'll show you how to create one. Okay, the first thing you need to do is open up your Photoshop and go to File, Automate, Create Droplet and that'll bring up this dialog box here. So it's a, it's separated pretty easily, so the, the first thing you need to do is choose where you're actually going to save the droplet. So I, I have chose to save it on my desktop, and it's just called droplet.app. Uh, Photoshop adds the .app part of it, uh, but you're just gonna uh, name it whatever you wanna name it. I just have droplet here. Next, you're gonna choose what Photoshop action you're gonna choose. So here is the set. This is where you, uh, you have a list of your folders of actions in Photoshop. You can choose any of the sleeklens.com Photoshop actions if you want, um, but I have just a sample one that I made. That way it's just it's, it does one quick thing. Basically turns your photos black and white, just really simple. And so I just have sample there, and then I have a black and white action that's the only one in the folder. And then uh, the two boxes that I usually keep checked are the suppress open dialog box. That just makes sure they open easily with no, no warnings or anything. And then I also have the suppress color profile warnings. Uh, that just uh, allows, you know, if you ever open a photo in Photoshop and it's, it's supposed to be CMYK and it's actually RGB and all that kind of stuff, um, this just suppresses it because we don't need to see all that stuff. Uh, the next options, which I always keep on stop for errors just to make it easy, is a uh, the where the errors will be. So if you say stop for errors, then Photoshop will go ahead and stop exactly what it's doing at that point and wait for you to tell it what to do. Uh, if you're running a whole bunch of files at once, you can say to log errors to a file, and that's where you can save the file, the error, uh, error file, uh, and it will just keep blowing through all the photos and uh, and not stop at all. So I just usually keep it to stop for errors just so I can uh, see if it's not running. Uh, next is the destination of where you're going to save uh, the, the folders or the files that have been uh, changed with the actions. Um, you have none to where it's just going to open it and apply it. Uh, and then you can also choose save and close, which is normally what I do. Or you can say folder and you can uh, tell it to export to a certain folder with naming conventions. You have a whole bunch of naming convention, op convention options here. You can do uh, document type, you can do uh, digit numbers, date, all that kind of fun stuff. If you do choose this method, make sure you have the extension as the last option uh, depending on what you put on there. So make, make sure you have extension as your last uh, version here. But I'm gonna go back up here and click save and close. And so the other checkbox box that I make sure that I have checked is the override save as commands that just makes sure that it closes easily uh, and you don't have to worry about it you know hanging up when you uh, when you open a JPEG or something like that and it has saving options that just makes sure that it will ignore, ignore those options and go ahead and close so that way it's a whole automated process a uh, whole lot of uh, whole lot of descriptions but let's go and get into the actual droplet so i'm just going to go and click okay and now i'm going to minimize my photoshop and you can see this little icon down here with an arrow it's the photoshop droplet icon this is exactly what you need this is exactly what you just created to batch process your folders and the easiest way to do this is uh, this works for both pc and mac is when you have the uh, uh, little application right here i have a folder that has a whole bunch of uh, sample images. These are just uh, regular color images as you can see here. And so I'm just gonna take the whole folder and drop it onto the droplet. And when I let go, Photoshop is gonna open and it's gonna apply the effect, the Photoshop action to the folder. All right, there we go. It is done and now we'll go and close this. Now we'll open the droplet folder back up again. And now when I look at these folders and these files, they're all black and white, and that's because it just applied the black and white action all the way through to every file. And so that was easy as it gets. You can do this with as many images as you need to. It just might take a little longer. Uh, but that was it, how to uh, quickly batch process uh, a whole bunch of photos at once. This is a great way if you're a portrait photographer and you want to go ahead and apply the same effect, maybe a sharpening effect or a resizing effect or something along those lines. This is a great way to go ahead and apply those all at once without you having to touch each individual one. So I hope you enjoyed that video on Photoshop droplets. This is Jordan from sleeklens.com and I'll see you in the next video.